In this video, I'm going to go through each of the five extra practice questions. Here we're doing natural deduction and we're going to be using just the rules one through five. Here is the first question. My conclusion, I'm going to put it over here just so I don't confuse it with one of my premises. I'm asked to conclude, to show rather, that if both of these premises are true, then necessarily this disjunction, QRM, is true too. I notice, first of all, that one of the disjuncts in my conclusion actually doesn't even make an appearance in my premises. There is no M in my premises, and that alerts me to the fact that what I'm really going to have to do is actually just show that Q follows necessarily from the truth of these premises. And then I'm going to use the rule of addition to add to that Q or M. Because remember, if I know that Q is true, I know necessarily that Q or M is true. That's what the rule of addition says. And I know that because for a disjunction like this to be true, only one of the disjuncts needs to be true. Okay, so I'm going to try and show that Q follows from the truth of these two premises. What I'm going to do first is use simplification on my first premise. Uh, my first premise is a conjunction. I'm going to get P on its own, which is the left, left conjunct. Then I want to get Q, remember? I see that Q is over here. I know what I can do to P in order to get the antecedent of the conditional that's on line two and put me in a position to use modus ponens. I'm going to use the rule of addition on line three to turn that P into P or F and that is the antecedent of the conditional on line two. So I can use modus ponens on line two and line four to get the consequent of the conditional Q, which is what I'm after. And now I'm just one step away from my conclusion. I've shown that Q follows from the truth of these, these two premises. So I can just use the rule of addition to show, therefore, so does Q or M. So rule of addition on line five. Next question. Here I've got three premises. I'm asked to show that Y and not G follows from them. So I'm, tr I'm trying to show that that conjunction follows from the truth of them. Each of them feature in the premises. I've got a Y here and I've got a G there. Okay, what am I going to do first? Well, I'm going to do simplification on the most complicated of my premises, my third premise. That's really just a, a conjunction, so I'm going to do simplification on it twice. I'm going to get this conditional on its own. And once I do that, I actually, I was just going to do simplification on it twice and get the H on its own, but I now see that I have this conditional here. The antecedent, sorry, the consequent of that conditional is this disjunction, P or Q. I have on line one, my first premise is the negation of that disjunction. So I have on line one a negation of the consequent of this conditional. So I know I can do modus tollens on line one and, far and four to get a negation of the antecedent of that conditional, not G. So I put over here MT for modus tollens and I make sure I cite both of the lines I've used modus tollens on, one and four. So now I have not G, one half of my conclusion. Now I'm going to return to the simplification of line three that I was in the middle of doing. I'm going to simplify it again, get the other conjunct on its own, which is an H. And now it's super obvious to me. I've got on line two, if H, then Y. I've got on line six, H. So now I can show by modus ponens that y is necessarily true too, so I put mp for modus ponens. I cite lines two and line six, and I've got my y there. Now I have a not g on line five, 
a y or minus 7. So I can just put them together using the rule of conjunction to give me my conclusion. Question 3. Okay. My conclusion is really simple. It's just not g. And I see that not g appears there. It appears in the consequent of my first, uh, the conditional that is my first premise. I see that this is really complicated. My second premise is almost overwhelming, but I'm going to try not to be overwhelmed because the, because what I have on line one indicates to me that if I can show that just P and Q follows necessarily from the truth of that, that big long conjunction on line two, then I'll just be one step away from getting my conclusion, not G. All I'll have to do is use modus ponens. So before I just like stress myself out by the way this looks, I'm just going to use simplification on it because I can see that really this is just one complicated conjunction. There's the main operator there. It's a conjunction in the middle. So I'm going to do simplification on it once to isolate the left conjunct, which is itself a conjunction. There's the main, main operator. It's a conjunction of P and this biconditional. I'm going to disregard the biconditional and get this P on its own. So I'm going to do simplification on line three and I've got P. Now all I need to do is show that Q is necessarily true too. So I'm going to do simplification on line two again, get this conjunct, the right conjunct on its own. I see that now what I have on line five is itself again, just another conjunction. There's the main operator. So I'm going to do simplification on it again to get Q and D on their own. Again, I'm after the Q. I'm going to do simplification on it again to get the Q. And now I have a P and a Q. I've shown that if all of this is true, if this long sentence on line two is true, then P is true and Q is true. So necessarily P and Q is true. Conjunction seven, four. And now I'm, I'm in a position to do modus ponens with line eight and line one, because I've shown that the antecedent of the conditional on line one is true. So I know that the consequent of that conditional, not G, is necessarily true too. So I say modus ponens on line one and line eight gives me not G. Question four, I need to prove this disjunction here. Again, I have a situation where something appears in the disjunction, that is my conclusion, that doesn't make an appearance at all in my premises. So I'm cluing into the fact that what I'm really gonna need to try and prove is T and Q. And once I've proven that, I'll just use the rule of addition to add or G to it. Okay, so I'm trying to get T and Q. Here I can see T, so I think it would be awesome if I could show that from the truth of these premises, P and R is necessarily true, then I can do modus ponens to get T. And I think that's going to be pretty easy. I'm going to do simplification on 1 to get P on its own. Simplification on line 3 to get R on its own. I'm going to put those together via conjunction to get P and R. And then I'm going to do modus ponens on line 2 and line R and line 6 rather to get T. Now all I need to do is get Q. That's not going to be hard because I have a Q in my first premise and I have a Q in my third premise. So I can use a simplification in either of them. I'm going to do simplification on 3 to get Q. Again, I'm going to put those together, T and Q. And now I'm one step away from getting my conclusion, which again, I'm going to get by just using the rule of addition on line nine, because I know that if T and Q is true, it's necessarily the case that T and Q 
or G is true as well. So addition on line 9 gives me my conclusion. Final problem. I'm asked to show that this uh, conjunction follows from the truth of, truth of the two premises. This conjunction is made up of an F and a conjunction of P and Q that's negated. What am I going to do? I'm going to just do what strikes me as being the first thing that I'm capable of doing, which is simplifying line 1. Simplify line 1. I'm going to isolate that right-hand conjunct to give me not T and B. I'm going to do it again to get not T. And that's helpful because now that I know that not T is necessarily true, I can use that not T together with what I have on line 2, the conditional. I can do modus tollens because on line 2 I have, I, I've shown that not T or a negation of the consequent is necessarily true. So I do modus tollens with line 2 and line 4 to show that a negation of the antecedent of that conditional is necessarily true. Not P and Q. And that's one half of the conjunction that is my conclusion. The other half is an F, but it looks really straightforward to get that F. I have an F up here. It's one half of the conjunction that is my first premise. So I'm going to do simplification on line 1. Now I have F on line 6, and I have a negation of P and Q on line 5. I'm just going to put those together via conjunction, F and the negation of that conjunction, which I don't have any more slides, so that was going to be my, my final... Um, my final step but actually I really ought to have put them if I look over at my conclusion I really ought to have put the conjuncts in the diff in a different order right because the conclusion is actually not P and Q and F sorry that's how I ought to have written them and I could I can just easily do that because on line 5 I have that on line 6 I have that, putting together, oh that should also be a 6, putting together 5 and 6 gives me that. So I should have just written it straight up like that. And that's my conclusion.